So we talk about this being in touch with something that is more real than real. And let's just go straight there to McKenna before we return to the bigger picture. So he's talked about the, uh, what is it, self-healing machine elves? Self- self-transforming. Self-transforming machine elves during his uh, DMT travels. And uh, I just talked to Rick Doblin, who also had different travels through this hyperspace. Uh, <laughs> so, so, but they all seem to be traveling on the, on the same spaceship, just to different locations. And there is a sense in which they seem to be traveling through whatever, I, I don't know if it's through space time or something else, to meet something that is more real than real. Mm. Uh, what can you say about this DMT experience about Terrence McKenna, about the poetry he used, but maybe more specifically about this place that they seem to all travel to. So the big question is, is, is it real? Is it really more real than real? The ancient philosophers were asking the same question, and their means of attempting to answer that was by dying. Um, so if you ask Plato the definition of philosophy, he will say that um, to practice it in the right way is to practice dying and being dead. And many people describe the psychedelic experience in sort of near-death experience terms. Um, and the encountering of all this visual imagery tends to be something that is often described as more real than real. So how does Terence talk about this? So I was just listening to the trialogues, which folks should look up. Um, somewhere between 1989 and 1990, Terence sits down uh, with his friends, uh, Ralph Abraham and Rupert Sheldrake at Esalen. And they're, they're trying to figure out the meaning of these discarnate entities and these non-human intelligences. And Terence develops a taxonomy for how to analyze this. And he says that, number one, they're either um, semi-physical but kind of elusive. So think of the Bigfoot or the Yeti or things like this, um, beings that exist somewhere between mythology and zoology. Um, which is, isn't really appropriate here. So, so uh, option number two, he says, is the mental... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're dropping so many good lines. It's so good. Okay, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> Somewhere between this, mythology and zoology. This is all Terrence McKenna. Okay, all right. I take no credit for this. Uh, so, op- But you're combining, you're like, uh, Jimi Hendrix only used the blue scale, but he still uh, he still created something new in, in the music he played. Anyway, go ahead. So, well, we're going into Mixolydian right now. Okay. So, um, uh, so uh, option number two... And this is this what this is what uh, Terence calls sort of the mentalist reductionist approach, um, and this is this is pure McKenna poetry. He says that these beings could be autonomous fragments of psychic energy that have temporarily escaped the controlling power of the ego. Um, mm. So, in Jungian senses, th- these would just be pure projections, um, the projections of schizophrenics in some cases. So they're essentially unreal. And the third option, the most tantalizing is that they're both non-physical but autonomous. In other words, they actually exist in some kind of real place, in some kind of real space, and that we can have Congress with them. There is communication. He talks about um, the whisperings of the demon artificers and that it's just possible that our meetings with these beings have coaxed the human species into self-expression in a very real way, that at different times in history, our relationships with these semi-autonomous beings may actually guide the species. Now, this is high speculation, and uh, Terence and Ralph and Rupert wind up talking about the early modern period and the scientific enlightenment, and that even someone like Descartes reports a dream in which uh, he came face-to-face with an angel who said that the conquest of nature is to be achieved uh, through measure and number. So so even the hard-minded materialist like like Descartes is confronting these discarnate entities. John Dee in the 16th century, the high magician of the Elizabethan court, um, he reports decades worth of what we would say is extraterrestrial communication or interdimensional communication. Um, and you can find instances of this throughout history, including among the pre-Socratics, um, and Peter Kingsley writes quite a bit about this, 